Hello and welcome to my kitchen at home where today I have a very special guest. It's my mate, Ed Kimber. Hello. Otherwise known as the boy who bakes <laughs> on Instagram and Twitter and now YouTube. Yes, finally Join. posting again every week. Every Trying. week. Finally, finally posting again. Did <laughs> yeah. you have a lapse? Yeah, I had like a year lapse. So Ed has revealed to me on more than one occasion <laughs> that he isn't a fan of cupcakes. So I need to qualify that. So it's not that I'm not a fan of cupcakes. I almost liked yours, Gemma. But like there were so many times you'd buy one that looked so pretty mm. and you'd eat it and like, oh, it's just the driest, sweetest thing. So yeah. I love a good cupcake. I just have to qualify that. Well, thank you for explaining <laughs> because I did take it quite personally. <laughs> first I've heard that. Um, but today I'm going to show Ed a cupcake recipe which is basically designed specially for him because I asked him what a couple of his favourite things were. And you put all of them in one cupcake. <laughs> yeah. So he said salted caramel and pretzels were mm -hmm. up at the top. So I'm making a pretzel and salted caramel cupcake and I'm going to show Ed how to make it. Exciting. So the first way that I'm going to get pretzels into this cake is by giving it not a buttery biscuit base because... I don't want to use biscuits. I'm going to do a buttery pretzel base. Perfect. So it's going to have a really nice kind of crust of buttery. Almost like a cheesecake. Yeah. Yeah, nice. But pretzels. Perfect. And actually, you could use this buttery pretzel base. <laughs> but buttery pretzel, I can't even think of what it is. BPB? Yes, in a cheesecake if you wanted, and it'll be lush. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> so I have used regular like salted pretzels here, and I've ground them up in a food processor until they're pretty fine. So I've got 90 grams of that, and so I'm putting that in a bowl. And then standard procedure with any buttery base, I like to add butter and golden syrup. So Ed, if you can just measure out two tablespoons of golden syrup. And I've also melted 25 grams of unsalted butter. And we'll put that in as well. And Ed, if you can just mix that all together. And what we're looking for is a kind of damp sand consistency. That is looking perfect. So now we need to put this into the cupcake cases. I've already got a 12 hole tin lined with baking paper. Um, and so they need a tablespoon each. It, it works out pretty exact actually. Nice. Tablespoon and then if you, if you put it in there, I will come this side and I'll start packing it down. I'm gonna use a little um, rolling pin for that. It needs to be really nice and tight. So this is like the best cold, rubbishy weather cake anyway, because it's like yeah. campfire yeah. baking. It is, kinda. Top it with some burnt marshmallow. Speaking of burnt marshmallow, <laughs> we're actually um, filming a video for Ed's channel, mm. which you can see at the same time as this video, which is going to have burnt meringue on top of a brownie, which is so, so, so good. And it's filled in the middle with salted caramel, and it's crazy, crazy delicious. Finally, I have uh, done these buttery pretzel bases and now we need to make the batter. So for this batter, to get this kind of really nice like nutty, brown, dark, unctuous flavour, mm -hmm. I'm using burnt butter. Um, so I've already burnt it and kind of chilled it and then softened it, which <laughs> it sounds a bit complicated, but basically I've burnt the butter in a saucepan just over a low medium heat, stirring it all the time until it browns. And then I cool it down, whack it in the fridge, and then when I want to bake it, I take it out yeah. to soften it. And it ends up like this. I love burnt butter. It's just got super nutty flavour, and it just adds like depth to everything. So you need 130 grams of butter. So I actually melted 130 grams um, and burnt it. But it does lose a bit of weight yeah, because yeah. it loses quite a bit of water. So just top it up to 130 with regular butter and it won't make too much difference. So just put that to one side for a sec. And I'm going to sieve 125 grams of self-raising flour along with a quarter of a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. And we've got two kinds of sugar, caster sugar and a bit of light brown sugar, nice. just to make it a little bit more rich. So I've got 100 grams of caster sugar. And then if you could just grab that brown sugar, this is just light brown sugar. You could use dark brown sugar if you want. And we'll also put in a nice pinch of salt. I'm going to use just a quarter of a teaspoon. I seem to have an obsession with everything sweet and salty. It's Me too. It's the thing too. I go back to all the time. And I, I still remember a time, and it still sometimes happens, when people are like, salt in your mm -hmm. cake or salt in your chocolate? I, when I was writing my first book, we had uh, someone who kind of proofread it. 
for like, just to make sure they made sense from a cook's point of view as well. Yeah. And she would complain about the amount of salt I put in everything. She'd say, no, you mean a pinch, don't you? I'm like, no, 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 I mean like a full quarter teaspoon because <laughs> it tastes way better. It's like food, it needs seasoning. It does. I've got a friend who literally everything I bake for him, he will take a bite, you know, and will. <laughs> Go, needs take more a, salt. Yeah, <laughs> needs salt. Like, Shut up. Um, right, so that's just been sieved, so that's ready to go. So we're going to add the butter, the nice. squishy burnt butter. And then two large free range eggs, if you wouldn't mind, Ed. No worries. Right, so that'll cut going in a minute. That's just a bit of yogurt. Sorry. For now, you're just so ahead of yourself. For now, I'm just going to whisk this all together, uh, just on a medium speed for about a minute. And after one minute, it's time to put a little bit of yogurt in. I've got two tablespoons of just plain or Greek yogurt is fine. Whack it in, Ed. Whack it in. See, I <laughs> love cakes with yogurt or kind of sour cream or any of those kind of mm. ingredients because it makes it super soft. I yes. think it makes it last really better, really better, a lot longer. Really better. Really better, it's my northerness. <laughs> this just needs to now be beat for about 30 seconds more. You can whack that up. <laughs> All right, that is good to go. So it's gone really lovely and pale and mm. light and it smells... It smells incredible. Really Basically, it smells like pure burnt butter. It does. It's like, I, I'm one of those people that I will, you know, lick the spoon afterwards. Well, there's, there's actually going to be a tiny bit left over oh, of this batter. So you can, you don't even need to lick the spoon, you can just scoop it out <laughs> with a spoon. Yep, that also sounds perfectly healthy. Because yep. we've obviously got a little bit of the case taken up with the buttery pretzel base, we don't want to fill, we yeah, don't want to use all the much. batter, otherwise it's going to explode. Um, so, as you may or may not know, I like to use spoons to distribute my, um, my batter into my cupcake cases. So, um, Ed. <laughs> so I'm going to make a mess. <laughs> no, you're going to be just fine. Not that much. I'd say a tiny bit more. Yeah. Make actually a tiny, tiny, like a bigger tiny. Perfect. Right, now do that 11 more times, <laughs> but just quicker. You're doing a fine job. <laughs> Baking is all about accuracy, and Ed is. I see. The annoying thing is, I'm really annoyingly uh, perfectionist when it comes to my own stuff. Oh, so you've dropped just... the ball for me. Thanks very much. That's really kind of you. <laughs> I feel so special. <laughs> Just for you. Well, I'm glad, actually, that, Ed, you're a perfectionist because um, Ed here is in my camp for the, the battle for electric scales. Um, some of you lot don't seem to um, get that having electric scales is going to change your life. See, for me, the main thing is I totally get the tradition of using cups and I have nothing against it. I have a set of cups in my own kitchen and I use them occasionally. The thing that I don't understand is the argument that cups are easier. I don't no. think it's easier. And if you're making certain things, uh, having accuracy means it'll be the same every time. Whereas if you're doing like um, crushed pretzels and you're doing it in chunks, yeah. depending on how you've crushed it, it'll be different. So I love scales. And also, I think there's a perception that scales are really expensive. No. They're not. Like you can buy a really good pair for a tenner. So Mine like, costs 20 quid. Yeah, exactly. So you can do it really cheaply. And once you've done it a couple of times, it just becomes second nature. So I love it. It's yeah. just, Please, please buy some scales. Please do. Please buy some scales or just, you know, Google it. Right, <laughs> you can stop there because I'm going to just redistribute of some of the, uh, <laughs> the batter here. Because otherwise they're going to just explode a little bit. I mean, you want if you wanted to, you could bake a couple of extra just for your own self. So now that Gemma's corrected all my hard work. <laughs> now that I have corrected you, Ed. <laughs> We just need to bake these cakes at 170 degrees C for 20 to 20 minutes. You're looking for a springy top and they need to be clean when you stick a skewer in the middle. You well. can continue, yes. Okay, <laughs> that does taste really good. Okay, my cakes have come out of the oven. Sorry, our cakes. <laughs> Sharing. So We're a team. <laughs> And I'm just going to leave those to cool because there's a lot of stuff to be done um, in the meantime. Mm. So now we're going to make the salted caramel. The good because, stuff. Yeah, because we're going to fill these cakes with salted caramel and we're going to use it to make a really tasty buttercream. Okay, I'm all about this. Yeah, so obviously salted caramel is one of your favourites. It and is. The recipe that we're doing on Ed's channel is also featuring salted caramel, but slightly different yeah. recipe. So you can watch both of them and decide <laughs> which one's your favourite. Yeah, you do something different to me because you use a wet caramel. I do. But I always do mine dry. I find dry really hard. Fair. Yeah, that's fair. It, is, it has a lot of uh, 
points where it will burn, so you have to kind of watch it like a hawk. But I like to minimise the you know, chance for burning <laughs> See, every opportunity. The reason I don't use water is because I like to minimise the chance of it crystallising, because whenever I do water, ah. it always crystallises on me. So. Yeah, I get one in eight of my, <laughs> of my caramels crystallises, but you I'm can impatient. get it back if it I happens. I just constantly... I feel the need to stir, and I know I'm no, I'm not supposed you to. Mustn't stir, no, Red. I know, I know. Like, yeah. I feel a constant need to do something all the time, so I'm like, yeah. Oh. Well, here over at the Cupcake Jammer Channel, properly. we like to exercise patience. Yeah. Um, and so, <laughs> with that in mind, we're going to start our caramel by putting in 175 grams of caster sugar. And then I'm going to pour over 75 millilitres of water. And I'm going to put that on a low heat to dissolve the sugar. Come with me, Ed! <laughs> Ed, it is very, very important <laughs> that you don't stir this. Okay. Um, because, as Ed said, it does crystallise. If you whack something in that's a different temperature to the rest of it, yeah, yeah. it tends to crystallise. And while you can get it back and save it, it is it's just tricky. a bit annoying. <laughs> My favourite way of preventing it is putting a lid on because then the steam hits the lid, comes back down and cleans the sides. Ah. So effectively, you don't have to do it with a brush or anything. That's very clever. I thought you were going to say put a lid on so you can't see it. <laughs> you can't get stir get tempted it. to <laughs> stir. So we're just going to leave that until it starts bubbling and the sugar dissolves, and then we're going to turn the heat up. Come on. So a few minutes has passed, and the, the sugar's all dissolved now, and we have resisted stirring. We have. We haven't well stirred done. at all. Um, so now that all the sugar's dissolved, we just need to let it do its thing and bubble away until it reaches a really nice, rich amber colour, um, which is the caramel point. I normally don't use a, t a thermometer for this, but it's about 165 yeah, degrees. Yeah, I always kind of describe it as like the colour of a rusty old penny, because it's kind of got that colour to it. So yeah, you know it's it does. Roughly about the right colour. A rusty penny. Yeah. Top tip. While we're waiting for that to amberify, um, <laughs> Ed, can you put some vanilla into this cream? I've got 175 millilitres or 175 grams of double cream, and I'm putting half a teaspoon of good quality vanilla extract. Let's give that a little wiggle. And this looks like it's ready to go, so it's time to pour it in. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> Don't mind us, we're just, you know, creating plumes of Chaos. steam. So obviously all that steam is incredibly hot, so please, please, please be careful. Um, when all your cream's in, just stir it really, really well. Make sure all of it's incorporated in the caramel. Uh, but for goodness sake, as I always say, do not put your finger in this to taste it. It, <laughs> it smells pretty irresistible, but resist. You will burn yourself. You really, Very really bad. will. Many a time I have made that mistake. So I'm going to leave that to cool. And then we're going to make our buttercream. Right, we're back. We're going to make the buttercream now. Um, the salted caramel cooled down and I've actually split it into halves because we're going to use half to make the buttercream and half to fill the cake. So we've got a Sounds nice oozy bit of caramel mm -hmm. coming up. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we're going to do is beat the butter. Okay. I've got 200 grams of soft unsalted butter here, if you wouldn't mind, Ed. And then uh, whack that on to a medium to high speed and beat it for five minutes until it's really pale and fluffy. Woo! <laughs> that is looking pretty mm -hmm. pale. So now we're going to add some icing sugar. I've already sifted it and there's 320 grams. We can just chuck the whole lot in. Gently. All in? Yes. Great. And then we just want to start off on a low speed to avoid a cloud. face full of icing sugar. And that just needs to be beat. <laughs> what happens anyway? <laughs> that just needs to be beat together for about three or four minutes until it's nice and pale again. Looking pretty good. It's nearly ready, but we've got to put the all important caramel and salt into the mix. So if you can put that bowl, and that's just half of the, the mixture that we made already. Half of me. Yeah, half you can of just this. eat the rest. Yeah. I made double for you. <laughs> um, and I'm also going to put in half a teaspoon of sea salt. Nice. Now we just need to mix that together for another three or four minutes. Ed, you can clean things up by just licking it if you want. It's my best way of cleaning it. Yes. Uh, and yes, just on a medium to high speed again. Mmm, 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 mmm. Have a little go on that. A little go? I mean, you know, within reason. 
Mm. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're just going to clear the decks and then we're going to get assembling. Stay here! I'm just going to go eat it, but that's fine. <laughs> Right, it's now time to get these things finished. Right. So the first thing we need to do is make some room for the caramel. So Ed, if you wouldn't mind coring these cupcakes with the apple corer. And the trick to this is to not go all the way to the bottom. While Ed's coring them, I'm going to come around the other side and fill them up with the caramel. And with them all filled, it's now time to decorate them. Ed, how are your piping skills? Good, I think. It's been a while since I've piped a cupcake, Good so we'll see. It's been, actually been a long time since I've made a cupcake. That's because you hate them. I really hate them. <laughs> <laughs> don't leave comments, please. Yeah, don't give him any hate. We're, we're teaching him the way of the cupcake, yeah. so you know, just let's just forgive him for now, because he's about to love them again. Yeah. So, nice big blob on them, I think. If you want to know how to stop getting those little peaks on the top. I quite like the peaks, I was doing that on purpose. Oh. Well, we're going to stab them through the head with some pretzels later. Okay, we get rid of it. But if you want to not have peaks, you can just do a little whoop. Yeah, exactly. You didn't even need my help. And now to finish these off, um, to make it even more pretzely, I have some crushed pretzels here. I just did this by bashing them uh, with a rolling pin in a, in a bag. I didn't d use the food processor for this took time because I wanted to have a bit more chunky pretzel. Yeah, a bit of texture. And um, I'm going to kind of dust the edges with them. Sometimes you can sort of dip them into the bowl, but I don't like the way that misshapes the lovely bulbous blob that Ed has created. So I'm just going to sprinkle it. And now, for extra pretzel time. More pretzels. More pretzels. Obviously, more pretzels. So we've got all these lovely pretzels that we've been using all the way through. I'm just going to stab them in the top like this in a pretty fashion. Oh, very cute. Eee. And that is that. They're all finished. They look so good. Designed specially for you. <laughs> And before we get to eat them, I just want to tell you that right now you can go head over to Ed's channel to watch um, our video where he teaches me how to make his fit chocolate brownie with salted caramel and burnt meringue topping. It's so good. It is so good. And also, if you want to follow Ed on Twitter and Instagram, it's at the boy who bakes. Yes. You can also find him on a podcast. Mm. He has a podcast called Stir the Pot, and I'm actually <laughs> featuring on that podcast too. Gemma does one of my favourite, favourite episodes. Oh, it's a really good episode. Probably, yeah, probably, probably will. <laughs> um, so go and listen to that if you want to um, hear how we get on <laughs> outside of the kitchen. Um, and now it's time, it's time to, to eat. eat. Yeah. So here we go. Ready? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, go. Go. Oh. Mm. oh my god. That is so good. Look at that oozing. It has that really nice sweet and salty thing going on. Yeah, it does. Oh, that base is really salty, I love it. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna eat all of this. We made a good cupcake and Ed is now sold on cupcakes. <laughs> we Your won. cupcakes. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Just mine. Yeah. See you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>